Well, on the bench here, I've got the starter off my John Deere 420 tractor. It's a 420 high crop. And I restored this tractor back in 2017, and now it's September, actually it's October 2024. So seven or eight years ago, I, I run through it, and I, I think I remember doing brushes on this one. Um, but anyway, look, it's been starting fine. Um, the Bendix is good, and... That seems to be working well. But um, I brought it home from a tractor show a week ago and I started it and it ran fine over the weekend and I started it and put it on the tractor. I put it on the trailer to bring it home and it started fine. I parked it out in front of my shed and when I went to shift it, I couldn't get it going again. And so I thought the battery might have been down a bit so I charged the battery up and made sure I had plenty of power there and that made no difference and what was happening was when when you pull the starter it's got a rod that you pull you pull the starter here well the battery cable was getting warm and I felt maybe the body here was getting warm as well so over at the tractor I pulled this starter switch off now this is just Delco Remy stuff nothing special at all for in the states and what I what I did have was the, the power comes from your battery positive here. Now, um, I've got an alternator on this tractor, so I'm negative earth. So your positive comes here into this, that little triangle terminal down in there. So I'll get my fat finger out of the way into here. Then when you pull the lever, that pushes the button. And this bridging piece here, that bridging piece touches here and it also touches that terminal there on the starter. And that's how the power gets into the starter. So this item sits on here, these screws, these two screws here hold it on. I just put them back on there so I wouldn't lose them. And so that sits on there. You turn the tractor ignition on and you pull this lever that puts power from your battery terminal here via the bridge piece to your starter and away it goes. Now, it hadn't started for a week or so, then before I went over and I thought, I'll just give it a try before I pull the starter off. Well, I wound it over four or five times and I thought, well, right, I'll, I'll turn the fuel on and give it a run. But by the time I turned the fuel on and thought I'd um, you know, drive the tractor around, well, the starter stopped working again. And the battery lead, the positive lead coming from here was getting warm. And I did feel that this was getting a bit warm too, but I didn't persist, I thought, well, stop biting, stop buggering around and um, just fix the bloody thing. So, <laughs> so that's what I've done. Now, you can see on the, on the bridge piece here, there's only the connection over there. So it's, in, it's insulated from this button here, but you can see across there. And What was happening, you can also see on the button there, that was only across a little bit as well. So last time when I was playing with it and tightening it up, what I had obviously done was I'd turned, by tightening it up, I'd turned that and made it crooked. And so when the button come in to push on it, it pushed on an angle. So it was just touching on that side of the bridge and on this side of the bridge. Now, I have been looking at that to see if that could have shorted out there somewhere. And... Look, it may have, but I just can't see that. Pop this apart and have a quick look. Um, pop the starter apart and see what's going on. Because it seems funny that it did work for a while and it didn't, so there may be something loose inside or... Who knows? I, I think... I, well, I thought I could remember with this one, sitting there lapping the brushes to match the, match the um, shape of the armature, commutators. So we'll put all that out of the way there. We'll pop this. Now this is a bit of gasket paper I put on back in the day. A bit of tape or something. You can see a bit of brush wear and things like that in there, we'll replace that. 
and we'll just have a quick look through here if we can see anything oh. that doesn't want to turn Yeah, that's, that armature should turn. Okay, that might be why it's jamming up, um, why it's, it's overloading, why there's a bit of resistance in the wires. So, I'll just have a look that I put any little centre pop marks in last time. I'll go and grab a correction pen. Okay, so we might just run run the correction pen. There we go. That shouldn't all rub off. <laughs> yeah, bloody hope not, Lance, anyway. But yeah, that armature, that armature is stuck. So we need to see what's happening there. All right, I'll get my trusty fit all spanner. You call them crescent wrenches. We call them shifters. No, that's not feeling good. So this should be nice long bolts. They go right up in through to this housing here. So we'll just see how we go. Okay. Oh, that is just solid. She might have welded together, eh? It's well to this end bush, I probably haven't bloody oiled that enough. Well, I, I can't remember oiling the bloody thing for ages, so that's probably my own fault there, I would imagine. All right, we'll undo the, we'll undo the brush plates here. So that's all looking good. Okay, this is what's gone wrong here. The starter motor has kept running for some reason. And I would say we've probably never put enough oil in the end here. I usually grease them, but um, I'll just see. We can pull it off the end. We might put that in the lathe and just tidy that up a little bit. You can see it's dragged a little bit across there. I'm trying. These all feel good. I think 
it was lack of maintenance on my half, my behalf, with it not wanting to turn in that bush. I must admit, some of these tractors you jump on and go for a run and check the oil and go for another run. <laughs> really. So we'll pop this back in with a heap of lube in there and just see what we got. I was going to try and leave the brushes hooked on if I could, but... Got a tight spot and a loose spot in there. Okay, you can see I've got it chucked up here in the lathe. And you can also see just in there, there's a little bit of metal transferred. Now, the original, the original end cap has no bush, no nothing in there. Absolutely nothing at all. It's metal on metal. And I did let other people drive it um, at the show and um, I don't know whether the starter got stuck in or it may not have, it may have just been um, you know, run dry, but it always whizzed over very quickly. I can't sort of understand why, um, why we had trouble there, but you can see a little bit of galling in there. Now, the aftermarket end cap for your Delco Remy, now this is a, this is a Steiner one, it has a brass bush in there. So, um, it has a has an end cap where they've machined it, and this one has an end cap as well. So I do have a brush and a bush kit for it. So on the on the original starter here, that that does give me the option of boring this out, um, oversize and fitting a bush, and polishing this surface back down, or and take this back surface slightly undersized if need be but you can see I can't I can't pull the washer off the end there due to metal transfer so so what I might have a look at doing is if I can run this tool in that must be very close I'll see if I can just run it up and get rid of that metal eh Take it until it just touches. Whoop. Come out a bit, I'll do that again. I wasn't happy with that. Sneak in him, mean. There we go.
what's that look like there? Do the washers come over? Yes, it does. I'll just take the centre out of there, take the washers off. And that'll let us polish that a little bit better. I'll get a little bit of finer emery tape. And we'll give this a bit of a polish. That's looking okay. All right, let's give these just a touch up. They're pretty good, but we'll just give them another little touch up while we have it out. looking pretty good okay we'll tidy him up we'll do another small cut eh See how it drags across the lines there a little bit. Now there's a point for discussion. We were having a discussion the other day, Blake does a lot of 12 volt stuff and he said undercutting the commentator um, yeah, the, in the guts there, on starters you don't do it, on generators you do. So what do you think about that? I'll give it another polish, eh? Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, you remember, and, and I was taught at school, at the trade college, that I thought we had to undercut all of them, and they're saying, no, you don't do that because of starter, because of the extra load, it, it, um, um, it, it can arc across, and anyway, I don't know. I was always taught to do it, but I might try without just to see what goes on.
Well, once you put it in the lathe, you can see little bits of metal dragged across there now that we probably should run through and get out, I would imagine. Yeah, okay, we'll have a look at that. Um, yeah, I think, I think I might just clean them up a little bit. You can see where the lathe tool has dragged them across just a little, burned them just a bit, so I'm not 100% happy with that. Yeah, anyway, we'll have a look. We'll come back shortly. Okay, just a quick look there. Look, from when I did them last, I, I did have a lathe tool that I'd ground up with a little, you can see a little point there. So I just went round by hand with these, just to make sure there was no arcing across, and then I gave it a quick polish again. So I'm happy with that. Um, I think that should be okay. Yeah, and, and the process was just put him in and pop him out like that. We used to use, Oh, I don't know, all you old blokes will remember, you used to have a hacksaw blade and you'd grind the sides off it and you'd stick it up and you'd drag him out a couple of times, but anyway, I just made sure there was no copper being dragged across. And we've got that polished, so that's probably all we need to do the, the arm, to the armature. Um, this looks okay. So if I get the tail stock out of the way now, And this should run nice and freely in there. Is what, I'm, is what I'm hoping. So that feels good. I think is probably half the trouble. I wasn't doing that. I was literally just hopping on and going for a drive. I'd check the oil, check the gearbox, check everything else, and I'd—I I'd bloody forgot about that one. I'm pretty sure. So be, oh, don't be frightened. <laughs> but yeah, look, that's looking okay. I'm going to pop that starter back together and see if it works. I'm pretty sure it will. Um, Clean me old lathe up from the copper on it. Copper's better than cast iron and things anyway, so um, I'll tidy that up. But I'm, there, there was no like real burning arcing through there, so um, I'm fairly confident that it was lack of maintenance on my behalf. That's what I'm thinking. That's running nicely now. There's no hard spots, no tight spots. Um, I'll have to get those thrust washers and put back in and yeah I'm gonna put it together and see how it goes okay it's very windy out here um, and it might blow the sound out but you can see I've got the starter fitted and if I this is the pull rod here so you you pull the lever on the dash so we'll turn the key on and we'll give him a hit <laughs> So there you go. Um, yeah, bloody dog's got to bark all the time. I don't know why. It gives me the shits. But um, that seems to have fixed it nicely. I'll go again. So, so that's not too bad. Um, what we're going to do, you can see up on the seat there, there is um, the side panel that goes on here. So. I'll put all that back on and that'll be the job done. I can get the old John Deere back in the shed and out of the weather. <laughs> 